Okay, okay. okay. now uh, it is Dr. Jazar's uh, presentation. And uh, he has been uh, working in this area for uh, nonlinear dynamics for years and years. And I met him uh, probably 20 years ago. And he is now the, the associate dean of a school at the RMIT. RMIT, MIT, RMIT, similar, right? Okay, and that's a very big university. And uh, some of our delegation from this university visited there. Okay, now let's uh, welcome uh, Dr. Jizar for the presentation. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I'm going to talk about parametric vibration to understand what is going on in a simple way. Uh, this is a pendulum. This is a pendulum. When you go to park and you play like this cartoon, it is called swing. Swing. Okay? You have this experience that by sitting and standing, you can increase the amplitude of vibration or you can decrease the amplitude of vibration. Every single kid can do that. How do we do that mathematically? Look at this pendulum again. This pendulum. Mathematically, by sitting and standing, we are changing the length of the pendulum frequently. So by changing the length, of the pendulum, you can increase the amplitude or decrease the amplitude. Such a system is called parametric. And I'm going to talk about parametric vibration. Okay. Uh, the simplest equation in parametric vibration is Matthew equation. And I use Matthew equation as a sample to show you what is the method that I'm going to introduce to find the stability boundaries of parametric vibration. Why parametric vibration have stability boundaries, I'm going to show you. Well, look at the first problem here, which is a very simple harmonic vibration and mass. In this case, mass is one. And the string, mass is string. If from any initial condition, means you push it down, let it go, it vibrates forever with the same amplitude, same frequency. Nothing will change. Now let's assume that that K here becomes K1 plus K2. So you know that when you have two strings, you add them off. Again, it is one K. K means string, stiffness. Now imagine that one of these two Ks, one of these two, is going to be changing harmonically, like this one. Now it is working. Now this one. K1 is an average, usually high. Let's say 100. K1 is 100. Newton per meter, for example, kilonewton per meter, 100. Then K2 here is 1. And K2 is changing by time. So the total stiffness of the system will be between 101 and 99. But that one fluctuating can change the total dynamic of the system to make the system stable or unstable. I'll show you what is the meaning of stable or unstable. This equation is the same that I showed you, but to simplify the mathematics, you are using K1, in this case, by little a, and K2 by 2b, and instead of ne plus sign, I use negative sign, that cosine is going to change that sign. So this equation, which is called math equation, is the same as this equation. So you imagine that I'm talking about a vibrating system that the stiffness has a fluctuation very little. Okay. That equation around 100 years ago was studied and this stability chart was generated. What is this stability chart? Look at this axis. It is A. A. The huge stiffness. I was talking about 100, for example. A. This line shows B. 
B is K2. So this plane is K1 over K2. So to a stiffness. This is the average stiffness. This is how the stiffness is fluctuating. Again, I said 100 here, for example. For example, go from 10. <coughs> Look at this, what happens if B introduces to the system. If B is zero, then you have mass spring equal to zero, so you are on this line. So when you are talking about harmonic vibration, mass spring, we are just on that line. There is no B. When we introduce B, means fluctuation, we generate this. I'm going to show you how we generate this plane later. But look at the, look at the green area. These are stable. What is stable? <laughs> means if you are in that area, then vibration goes to stop. If you are in the park and swinging and changing the length of, length of your pendulum, you are going to stop. If you are in the red area here, it is unstable. It means it's going to be increased. Look, the only reason of a stability and instability is the relationship between these two numbers. These two numbers, we are not going to change them. They are fixed, but it depends on where you are. So their ratio is important. Well, since 100 years ago, or probably more than 100 years ago, 150 years ago, this equation was studied by first Matthew and then other people. And this guy generated much better method in 1947 to discover those planes for a bigger range of area, I'm going to show you. But Matthew solved the equation analytically, and these are the solution. Cosine elliptic of even number, cosine elliptic of odd number, and these are period of pi or two pi, and so on. These are the details, like we don't need to go there. Fractional, uh, continued fraction is the best method before generating computers was the best method to discover those areas, those boundaries. What is the boundary? I'm going to show you the boundaries again. Let me get back here and say what you're doing. Let's assume that we are here, unstable, a region. This axis is A, so let's decrease A and go to this region the system becomes stable. The boundary between these two, the boundary between these two means if you are on this line, vibration is going to be a steady state forever. Not decreasing, not increasing. This is called the boundary of stability and instability. The whole chart is called stability plane of Matthew equation. Okay. These are numbers that McLaughlin, this guy, generated using continued fraction. I'm not going to show you what is continued fraction, but you can guess that it's sort of perturbation analysis. These are the numbers. With these numbers, you can generate those lines. You see how important are the total number of digits after the decimal. I'm just reading one of them. If B is equal to 1 and A is equal to minus 0 0.4551386. You are on one point of one of those boundaries between stable and sta unstable system. To generate this, this is exactly what we found based on the previous plan, previous data. These data, you see jumping B between 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And here you see that there are some jumping. So we can feel the numbers in between, but this is exactly what you get using those data that McLaughlin generated. Let's see what is the vibration, the situation. This is one of the stable region. Just to remember, instable, unstable region it starts from a point and propagates, spans. And stable system is going to shrink. So when you go away from this line, which means increasing B, B was K2. Increasing B increases the instability. 
Okay, this is one point and that's the system. If I'm lucky, that movie is going to run. I'm lucky. This is the vibration of the system. That K, that stiffness, is here. It has six or seven for the average, and it has around one fluctuating. So that spring goes between six to eight, six to eight, six to eight, with the same frequency of vibration. And as you can see, it just stops. It's simulating the same guy in the park which was swinging. While sitting and standing, he sets this value, and then it can stop the, the system. This is one point in unstable, unstable system. How did we do that? I was here, I just increased the value of B from one to six. Now that stiffness that you are seeing here is going to be between one to 13. And again, if I'm lucky, I'm not lucky. <laughs> Let's try again, please. Yes, it is working. Okay. Look and see what happens when you are in an unstable domain. You can guess what happens. If you are in the park, the boy is going to swing further and further, and either it's going to turn. Okay, I don't want to take your time, but you can guess that it's going to increase and increase until it goes theoretically to infinity. Okay, can you find a more exact method to generate <coughs> those boundaries? Why? It is very important. When you are exactly in the middle of a stable region, that's okay. You are far from stability region. <coughs> when you are very close to the boundary between two regions, it is important where you are exactly. So we need a better method, and I found a better method. And then I apply the method to other type of parametric vibrations. For example, this complicated MEMS system that one of my students called Nina worked on that and generated an equation. As you can see, that's the equation. Over there, I call that Nina equation. But uh, that's a parametric system. These are other questions that you can raise. I don't want to take that time. But method that I generated, I call it energy rate algorithm, or energy rate method. Looks simple and logical, and it works fantastically. That's the system that we have. We have x double dot, plus a function only of x. In our case, in Matthew's case, it was kx, or k1x. And then we have everything else in this shape. In Matthew's case, it was k2, or 2b, cosine of omega t. Let's take an integral. If you remember, this part gives you potential energy. And this part goes to kinetic energy. And when you integrate this equation, you generate total energy, which is Hamiltonian part of the system, and then everything else goes to the right-hand side like this. So finally, by taking uh, integration, I generate this equation that I call energy rate. Look at this side. This side is addition of kinetic energy, potential energy, derivative. On the right-hand side, what I have is 2bx x dot cosine of 2t, now, if right hand side, this part, in one period disappears, means it generates some positive numbers and then negative numbers, in total it goes to zero, one cycle, then left hand side shows just a mass spring system and it's supposed to vibrate forever with a constant amplitude. So how can I generate this to cancel itself in one cycle? It goes to B. I change B, I take integral, I find the rate of energy in one cycle. If it is positive, it means you are inserting energy to the system and amplitude is going to be higher. 
if E dot in one cycle is negative, it means we are taking energy out of the system, it means damping, and energy of the system is going to decrease, amplitude is going to die. My job is to find a bead that during one cycle, the right hand side of energy rate is going to be zero. That B shows exactly on the boundary of vibration for a specific value of A. On the left hand side, I have A. So my job, I pick an A, I play with B, I integrate this equation one cycle, measure E dot, which is energy rate. I change B back and forth until I tune B to be on a point that energy rate disappears. Look simple, this is what we found. This is what we found based on that, and you understood that energy rate is negative in a stable region, energy rate is positive in unstable region. There is a simple algorithm, pick A, set A, pick B, integrate the equation, depends on energy positive or negative, change the B and uh, tune B means decrease the increment based on simple criteria and finally you tune this is what we found based on energy rate method you can't see or distinguish between what McLaughlin generated and I generated but to show you what is going on and learn what is going happening in this equation let me walk along this line look at this line Look at this line, this black line. A is going to be changed. B is going to set equal to this value, which is 1. I will walk along this and show you what happens to energy rate. This is energy rate. This is the energy rate. Stable, unstable. Stable, here you don't see anything. Is it touching zero or it is going above zero? If it is going above zero, it is stable region. Below zero, unstable. I want to show you something else. Look at this number here, it is one, stable. Look at this, it is four, nine, 16, 25, 36. As you can see, all of those in a stable regions start from numbers to the power of two. One square, two square, three square, four square, five square, six square, and so on. Okay. Now compare these two. This is energy rate on that line, and this is stability of the Matthew, uh, Matthew stability chart, or similarly with energy rate. Do you see this? Connect these 25 to that, 16 to the end, 9 to here, and you understand what is going on. This part, which is a stable, shows this well here. Another well, another well. This part generates this gap, this area. That part, that little part, which we are in unstable, shows this part. Very good. It gives us more information than just the plane. What energy rate gives us some relative understanding how stable is the system. Look, if we are in this stable system, we are here, for example, at the best case, when we get closer to boundary of stability, the amount of stability decreases. So let me measure this length or the depth of the well as a measurement for stability. But well, this is not my point. My point is, my method works better than McLaughlin method. Look at this number here. You remember the number, you don't remember probably. This is my number. You remember the number from McLaughlin. Mine has zero, four after McLaughlin's. And I'm going to compare these two. This is my clock lens, and let me just talk about one point. Look at these two. Look at these two numbers. Forget about the rest of them. These two numbers, as you can see, this is my clock lens. 4551386. 4551386. 
zero four. Very, very tiny value. Here, you see the time response of both systems. This one and that one, you can't distinguish anything. Here, you see phase plane of both. You can't distinguish anything in one cycle. It seems both of them are exactly on the boundary of stability. But here, here you see time response of the system when I subtract the amplitude. And as you can see, the amplitude is going to be changing and increasing. One of these two is not exactly on the boundary of the stability. And I'm showing you later that mine is better. Anyway. Uh, let's walk along this line here and enjoy the same topic that I said. Here you see a better view around 1, 4, 9, 16 and so on. But something is happening. What is happening? Let me get back and tell you what I'm doing. Let me walk along this line and remind you that these lines, these lines, one of these lines, which is periodic, the period is pi. The other line is 2 pi. So it depends on, on which boundary you are, period of motion is pi or 2 pi. It means the whole motion repeats itself in 2 pi according to the time. Let me go here and look at this. I'm integrating the whole cycle between 0 to pi instead of 0 to 2 pi. What happens here, 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 and here, I touch the line of 0. That's something that no other method could generate and found. Let me skip this part and show you this. This is the energy rate. So what I did, A and B. We pick a million points for A and B, and for each point we generate energy rate, and we show energy rate here as a third axis. This is the energy rate surface. As you can see, these walls are going high, means unstable system. Those areas that go below zero shows a stable system. So by, with this energy rate method, I can generate a mountain. And we have zero surface, like zero safe surface, that below that we have ocean or water. Above that, we have mountain. That zero surface, when we cut that plane with that mountain, we generate some cut or curve. Those curves are showing the boundary of a stable and unstable system. Let me show you a better figure. This is what I said. I cut that mountain with a surface at zero level. And you see some lines. And those lines introduce, again, the boundaries of stability and stability. This is a better high resolution figure. I don't know, maybe we generated 10 million points for that. But you enjoy this area, which is unstable unstable, this is a stable, this is a stable, but what is this? What is that? This is contour, this is what I said. We found this boundary, these two lines, I'm starting from one, going this way, from four, going that way. When we integrate between zero to two pi, what we get is another line which touches the surface, the zero surface, touches. Means between these two periodic curves, within the stable region, there is another line, there is another line that gives you periodic motion. Nobody ever found that before because we didn't have that method. There are more. Two pi, three pi, 4 pi, you see 4 pi. So if you are on this line, period of motion is 4 pi. You integrate in 0 to pi, you don't see that. But 0 to 4 pi, you see them. And more and more, 
here two, three, four, five pi lines. So there are a lot of periodic boundaries within each stable region as well. There's nothing in an unstable region. Conclusion. There's a better method using numerical integration. And then based on that, we can tune the system. Just if we have a few minutes, let me add the capability of this system. I just talked about that system, which is Matthew equation. A or A squared, doesn't matter, plus B cosine of T. And as you can see, with the other term here, the system is uh, linear. Sometimes we have this term addition to the equation, which is nonlinear. You remember, probably, if we ignore this part, it's called Matthew equation. If we ignore that part, we call that Duffing equation. Duffing equation gives you a pretty or Hamiltonian system. Doesn't have any stable or unstable. Stable or unstable comes whenever one parameter fluctuates with time. When we add those two, we have a new equation, nonlinear parametric vibration system. In reality, in practice, when nonlinearity is huge, we ignore this part. It's hard to analyze, or we don't know how to analyze. When periodicity is important and nonlinearity is too small, we ignore that part. So we have two extreme cases. But sometimes we cannot sacrifice one of them. So what we do, or what I did, let's fix E and then apply energy rate method on that. Find the boundary between A and B for the stability and instability, and then go back and change E and find a new one. This is what we find. Complicated, but let me show you. When E is zero, this is a plane, and we have boundaries of stability and instability. When E introduces, we go one step up, we find a new path. One step up, a new path. In three-dimensional, those boundaries between stable and unstable are twisting and expanding. Very interesting. Still, I'm working on generating a three-dimensional, but you could imagine the system. Uh, when we talk about stability and stability and parametric system, this guy was my pioneer, pioneer, my role model, Richard Land from Cornell University, a genius guy in this uh, equation. You can imagine what would be the future of this work. I just want to mention one thing instead of all of them that you can guess three-dimensional or different type of parametric equation and so on. What I want is this one. Relationship between energy rate method and Lyapunov method is the next step that I'm going to show. And then in short, I found a better method based on integration to find boundary between stability and instability. Thank you very much. <laughs>